came out tonight when we got here was we heard the town uh, received a negative advisory from the county planning department uh, for this moratorium. We all realize this is a very controversial subject. We respectfully ask for your patience and courtesy throughout this public hearing. And we request that you refrain from applauding. If this continues, we will shut this down and everybody will go home. No cheering. And just are talking amongst yourselves. So let's uh, get on with it and have a good meeting. The first speaker, please. Local support for a moratorium at all the town board meetings 
we hear a constant, uh, constantly told that 75 to 85 percent of the people in the town want a moratorium. I'm really surprised it's not 100 percent. Because all the credibility goes out of a survey. If you hop up to someone's doorstep, present them with filtered information, and then demand a response right there on the spot. People are purposely frightened, and they're not given time to do their own research before they answer the survey. The worst part of the survey is that people are purposely omitted. No one stopped at my house, nobody stopped at my neighbor's houses. So there's 30 people right in this half mile length that never got interviewed for this survey. And this is done to cook the numbers to make the survey look really good when they omitted a lot of the town residents. This technique was repeated throughout the town, which makes the survey a sham. Many people feel the town is wasting their time by imposing a local moratorium. A letter was recently drafted to encourage the town to, to scrap the moratorium idea. Unlike the anti-survey, the people who picked up this letter had time to read it and research it before they decided to support it or not. We've had hundreds of letters signed to support the town not having a moratorium since last Tuesday, and more are coming in every day. Since last Tuesday, we've had hundreds of letters from people saying the town of Shenango does not need a moratorium. To conclude, I feel that the town can easily do all of its work without a moratorium, and I urge you not to put one in place. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm number two, by the way. Yes. <laughs> number three. Hi, I'm Judy Howe. I'm from 702 Broxham Road, and I've lived in the town for 28 years. We are privileged to live in a town where we have clean water, clean air, and breathtaking countrysides. It boggles my mind to think that some residents are willing to sacrifice their way of life and taint it with unsightly wellheads, noisy compressors, and excessive truck traffic. Let's keep our roads safe, where children can ride their bikes, couples can push baby strollers, and neighbors can safely walk their dogs. None of these will be possible with huge water trucks going by every couple of minutes, wearing down our roads, kicking up dust, spewing exhaust fumes into the air, and making it unsafe for residents. The information I have read about hydrofracking certainly does not put my mind at ease. I'm very concerned about the long-term effects it may have on our community and the people and wildlife that live here. Once we lose our bedroom community to hydrofracking, no amount of money will ever get it back. Do we as residents trust large government and the self-serving gas companies to tell us the truth and protect us? Or do we look to our neighbors in Pennsylvania who are now living this one ending nightmare? I prefer to trust my own common sense that indicates that there are just too many unknown variables and consequences we have yet to know about hydrofracking. The people that support drilling have had to form coalitions due to the gas companies taking advantage of other people that have leased. The gas companies don't care about you or your land. They simply want the gas underneath, and once they have it, it will most likely be sold overseas or elsewhere. Long-staying jobs will not be created. The gas companies will bring in their own people and hire a few locals. Gas companies do not have to follow the same rules as other large corporations. They are allowed to keep their trade secrets of some of the additives used in hydrofracking. If all the additives are safe, what do, we, what do they have to hide? Would you allow somebody to open up your well containing the water that you drink and put a secret ingredient in it? I understand that people want to leave our children and grandchildren a nice inheritance, but at what expense? Instead, teach them and set an example of good old-fashioned hard work, saving for your future, not by a get-rich-quick scheme. I will not be blinded by the almighty dollar, and I will continue to fight to protect my community because I love the town of Shenango and the land that I am standing on. And if there's even the slightest chance that our way of life will be compromised, we cannot in good conscience support hydrofracking. I would like to thank each board member for listening I do appreciate the tough spot that you are all in. We have my sincere support and gratitude for protecting and preserving this community by voting yes 
to a moratorium and moving forward and banning kind of fracking because this is the only way to ensure the integrity of the town of Shenango. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Chris Lacey. My husband and I live at 656 Oak Hill Road in the town of Shenango. We pay taxes and we are energy voters. Today is the perfect day to hold this hearing. For everyone here that owns property in the town of Shenango, today was tax day. In the town of Windsor, because of the Dunbar Road compression station, school taxes went down 8%, even though the school budget increased. Today, I wrote a check to the Shenango Forks School District for $10,000. Over the 30 years my husband and I have lived here, we have paid around $400,000 in town and school taxes. I didn't have a huge problem with that until a group of people decided to confiscate my property rights. And that is exactly what this moratorium will do, take my property rights away. We all know that for the antis, this moratorium is nothing more than another step on the road to a complete ban on drilling in New York State. So, if you're talking to an anti, maybe you could ask them a few questions. Maybe you could ask an anti, do they drive a car? Do their children or grandchildren ride on a school bus? Ask an anti, how do they provide energy for their home? Do they use any type of fossil fuel in their home? Ask an anti, how far away is America from replacing the 85% of our energy that comes from fossil fuels with a cost-effective alternative? Ask an anti, are they willing to cut down the beautiful trees on our hillsides to replace them with solar farms? Are they willing to cut down the trees on our hilltops and replace them with huge, noisy, permanent wind turbines? Ask an anti, are you comfortable letting other states and countries assume all the risks for producing the energy that you use? And maybe you should ask an anti, are you willing to have America's children fight and die in foreign wars to guarantee a steady supply of foreign oil to support your lifestyle? Personally, I'm sick of buying oil from people who want to kill us. And part of the solution to that problem is under our feet. Instead of enacting an unnecessary moratorium, you should be working to have safe, responsible drilling happen as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Charlotte's Annex, 369 Port Road. I am thankful that the town has been able to allow us to have this hearing, and I thank you for that, and I am in favor of a moratorium. There was a study done in Colorado by Dr. Theo Colborn who established the Endocrine Disruption Exchange. The study she did revealed 171 products, 245 chemicals used for hydrofracking, and of those, 92% of the products had health effects. The other 8% are products for which there is no information because either being proprietary chemicals or no health studies could be found. With this list of chemicals and products brought to light, I want you to think strongly about responsible living. In my mind, responsible living is living with the mindset that whatever you do, whether it is on your own property or on public property, your first thoughts should be, what effect will this have on others? Will it harm my family, my neighbors, friends, community, future generations, etc.? Remember, everything that we as humans do has a cause and effect. Now think about all the hazardous chemicals you want to approve being used to get the gas out of the ground under your home, just to make some money. It is a known fact that these chemicals can cause cancer, destroy, destroy wildlife, contaminate water, pollute the air we breathe, etc. We cannot willingly authorize the destruction of this beautiful town. Look at the rolling hills, the beautiful valleys, the flowing rivers, the wildlife, etc. Are you willing to destroy all of that just for the possibility of the temporary benefit of gas drilling? At what cost are you willing to go after the almighty dollar? Is it worth the lives of your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren? We all need to take responsibility for our clean air, unpolluted water, healthy environment, and the lives of all future generations. It is known by the town board that 80% of the town lies over the aquifer watershed. 
This watershed area feeds clean water to millions of people downriver from us all the way to the Chesapeake Bay. Do we want to allow fracking and contaminate those waters, thus poisoning millions? Is that what we want to be known for? In Genesis, God declares it's our responsibility to subdue and dominion over the earth and its creatures, but also he is to work and till and keep the garden, and by extension, nature. According to Strong's concordance, the word keep means guard, protect, preserve. Thus, from the very beginning, God expected man to use the products of nature for his sustenance, but also to be responsible in that use and to preserve the life-giving systems and creatures of the creation. Therefore, I recommend the town board practice responsible living and protect the town of Shenango residents against hyperfracking nightmare that is more than likely going to come with contaminated water, polluted air, environmental destruction, loss of home values, and the ultimate loss of people from the town. The bottom line is to preserve the water and health of our community for the present and for the future, our generation and for all generations after us. Remember, you are the ones who protect this town. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Number six, I'm Susan Prentice. I live at 397 Brooks Road on Brooks Farm on Brooks Creek. I feel that I own the prettiest little farm in Rue County. My family settled this land well over 150 years ago. I am the fifth generation to live on this land, and there are two more generations of my family that want to live just as it is now. So you might think that I am against fracking, but that's quite the opposite. All of these generations have struggled to keep this land and maintain it with pride. The people against fracking have called me greedy and have stated that I'm only, I only want fast cash. I grew up on Castle Creek Road and watched Route 81 take farmland and close farms down. I heard one person say helicopters will be flying over their house constantly with the fracking process. Well, right now I have huge army planes doing touch and go landings and commercial planes landing just up the hill from me 24-7. That land, once called Mount Ettrick, was once owned by my family, and now it's called Binghamton Regional Airport. I guess that's progress. My breed consists of wanting a car made in this century, fixing the machinery, and being able to pay for the gas so I can mow my 50 acres of fields each year. They haven't been mowed in two years. I want to keep my beautiful barns in great shape. That takes money. I want to pass this farm on to my children and their children with assets to care for the farm so it won't be sold and divided like the Broadsman farm was. My greed consists of wanting lower taxes, good roads, better schools, people young and old wanting to move back to this area because there are jobs, the storefronts are filled, and other than beauty, this will be a place where they will want to live. Fracking will bring all of these things back to the area and more. I don't want meth, excuse me, if you don't want methane in your wells, then don't drink, don't dig water wells. Methane has been around since wells have been dug. It's like digging a cellar and blaming fracking for the radon in your cellar. New York State is doing their homework to ensure the safety of fracking in the state. All of you will be very pro-fracking if you do your homework. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next. I'm number seven. My name is Dr. Peter Scutanis. I'm a physician pathologist and I've lived in the town of Schnangel for over 33 years. As a pathologist, my job every day is to examine biopsies and tissue removed at surgery to look for cancer. We've learned a lot about cancer over my career. In order to develop a malignant tumor, you need several factors. First, you need the right genetics, and then you need several insults to those genes. Those insults are often exposure to tobacco, radiation, sun exposure, hormonal imbalances, aging viruses, and what I'd like to talk about tonight is chemicals. We have a lot of cancers in the Broome County area I've seen over the years. 
lot of those are due to the above mentioned exposures as well as to an aging population. We know that there are cancer clusters in Broome County. I've seen this in my career. There are cancer clusters mainly in areas of industrial activity and pollution. We have <coughs> contamination in Hillcrest, Johnson City, and Dakot. These are from industrial corporations that act accidentally, we are told, spilled chemicals into the ground. Where are these corporations now? The ones that contaminated these areas in Hillcrest, Johnson City, Endicott, what's left of IBM and Endicott? Nothing. Do we really now want to invite companies in to deliberately inject chemicals into the groundwater? Some of these chemicals include benzene, which is a known carcinogen which causes acute leukemia in adults. If you're exposed to benzene, even at a level of one part per billion, you may develop cancer with the above mentioned scenario. If you're asking, I ask you, is this a risk we're willing to take? If 1% of the fracking fluid is chemicals and 1 million gallons are used in a well, that's 10,000 gallons of chemicals per well. These can be spilled by trucks, by faulty valves. Are we really confident that multiple layers of steel and cement will protect us? Steel joints fail, concrete uh, cracks, and we've seen in Pennsylvania that methane and other materials leak into the water source. I support the stand of the Broome County Medical Society and the State Medical Society who have called for a moratorium on fracking in New York. Thank you. We have the next 10 people. Please step up to the chairs in the front, please. I'm Helen Chrisman. I own the Service Master of Shenango Valley. I have been in the area now for almost 52 years, providing a service to the community. The second year we were in the area, my husband and I built our home on, at 283 Castle Creek Road, where I'm still residing. And I'm happy to say that as a citizen in this community, I would not be opposed to some oil uh, gas drilling. Um, I have friends in Pennsylvania who have had it done, and if the same companies that have served them are in this area, I would have no fear, for they have done one fabulous job of keeping the area safe and useful. However, there is one concern I do have, and that is uh, the a moratorium concerning a third axle vehicle. Uh, in Service Master, we many times are called to help with disaster, as we have these last many years with all our flood and so forth. And I find it's necessary to hook that trailer onto the truck and take uh, 20 or 30 pieces of equipment to a place in order to help dry down the walls or do something of that sort. Um, if that particular law is passed, um, I guess I'd have to quit business because just yesterday I had the trailer hooked up and it was doing a job for a customer. Uh, I love this community. I don't intend to leave until death takes me away. But I want you folks to know that not having that third axle could be a hazard, not only to me, but if you have a boat, you might be unhappy about it. And if you had uh, a need for a pile of wood that I have in my dooryard and I wanted to bring it to you as a gift, you also would be unhappy if I couldn't get it there. I thank you folks for considering this. And as a citizen, I support having some oil, gas, but I also want to be aware that that's me smart when we make the right decisions. Thank you. Number nine. My name is Carol Buckowitz. I live on 42 Country Hill. Thank you for.
for considering a moratorium on fracking in our town. As was stated in a town meeting by a pro-fracking Chenango resident, we need to let you do your job as you were elected to do. Going forward with a moratorium will give you time to study more facts and procedures involved with welcoming such a high environmental risk industry. It can't be taken lightly, especially in view of the fact we don't know if it's safe. The much needed objective health study data is not known. Fracking fluids, some of which are known toxins, are considered trade secrets, exempt from the right to know law. Contaminated water from the fracking process can leak from well cases, cases crack, period. Even if they are thicker than what Pennsylvania does. If contamination happens, how does the well of an exposed non frank property owner who is not receiving 3,000 per acre per month from what I was told by a Pennsylvania fracker deal with undisclosed contaminants? Who picks up the corrective action expense to tainted wells and for how long? Very little, millions of gallons of highly toxic fracking fluids per well are recovered, 20%. It makes one wonder where the rest of it goes. Broom County already has one plume in Epcot, why make more? The hydrofracking gas industry has assisted and received exemption not only from the right to know, but also insists that the fracking be exempt from the Safe Water Act. If it's self-safe, one has to wonder why the exemptions. To those of you who feel fracking is safe, please step up, offer your services to be the fracking fluid exposed test group for health indications. Debbie Preston, Donna Lopardo, Senator Libis, Representative Richard Hanna come to mind. Expose yourself to the contaminants of methane, toluene, benzene, and other hazardous chemicals in the fracking fluid. Use us non frack property owners as your control group. Too often, those who make the rules don't have to play in the game. Where is the long-term economic viability? Drillers come, their salary is spent, they leave once the job is done. Where is the after drilling economic boom? Why the hurry to harvest this gas? We don't have the infrastructure to export it through pipelines. Where is uh, the long and short of it is business, politics, and who is benefiting the most versus health and environment? Thank you. Thank you. Number 10. Eric Johnson, Castle Creek Road, Castle Creek, Town of Shenango. I am here today in opposition to the proposed moratorium on natural gas exploration. And to speak for my son, who could not attend because he's working, not in New York, but in Pennsylvania in the natural gas industry. Ryan was born and raised in Castle Creek, attended Whitney Point schools, graduated from college, and 63 job applications later, nothing. No offers, no jobs, no one's hiring. Fortunately, he heard about a company in Lenox, Pennsylvania that was Rain for Rent. Rain for Rent provides water transfer for natural gas drilling sites. Whenever you see a photo of a site in Pennsylvania, the array of blue rectangular tanks are Rain for Rents. Ryan has been working there for two years. He has learned a lot about the natural drill gas drilling process because he is doing it. He is now a lead who supervises and is responsible for the activities of a crew of five people. He has learned many new skills in the last two years and has developed a first-hand understanding of all the processes, procedures, and technologies involved. First and foremost are safety and following all the rules, procedures, regulations, and codes that provide for responsible gas drilling. When he comes home and talks to me, he has never talked about the horrors of gas drilling because there have been none. But instead he has told me, Dad, you should see how the roads in Pennsylvania have improved in the last two years. It's unbelievable. Dad, you should see all the new businesses that have opened up, all the help wanted signs. Dad, you should see all the new cars and trucks and people's driveways and new tractors and equipment on farms. Dad, the guys from Pennsylvania laugh at us because we are from New York and can't seem to get our act together. Sometimes I think Ryan is trying to stimulate the economy all by himself. New truck, EV, smartphone, snowmobile, but he also has health, dental, and vision insurance, profit sharing, safety bonuses, and a 401k. Is there anything that's not so good? Yes. He has to drive back and forth about 100 miles each day. We've talked to him about moving to Pennsylvania, but he still has hopes that he'll be able to work in his hometown here in the town of Shenango. Ryan goes to work in Pennsylvania each day and practices safe, responsible gas drilling. It's time for this board to be responsible, to do the right thing, 
for the young people in the town who want new jobs and can't find them and go elsewhere, for the rural landowners that pay ever-increasing taxes and receive very little in services from the town and are directly discriminated against by this law, for new businesses, economic activity, and development that can come to this town. The sky is not falling. Do not enact this law. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Fisher, May Abfield, New York. My wife and I are refugees from the gas fields of Pennsylvania. Leaving behind our friends and neighbors, we sold the retirement home we had worked for for 35 years, just as the wave of natural gas crashed into Susquehanna County. One heavy diesel spewing stone laden dump truck had ground past our home every minute, nine hours a day for six weeks just to build one access road in the drill pad. We huddled as ceaseless helicopter traffic roared, roared low over our home dropping heavy orange bags of seismic cables into the woods, nearly killing the woodcutter. We watched as the local police were helpless to stop the tombs of foreign workers, some with guns, roam across private property to lace the woods and fields with cables and set off dynamite charges within feet of, but without notice to unsuspecting homeowners. We fought to stop the laser pipeline from taking property by eminent domain, only to watch it be built with Japanese pipe by a contractor from Oakland, California. Gas in the water, gas in the air, gas in the pipelines, and gas in the politics. It seeps into, corrupts, and poisons everything it encounters. Money pits neighbor against neighbor and family against family. Even the Catholic Church leased the ground beneath my parents' graves. Government's first responsibility is the protection of its citizens. The five of you are responsible for the health, welfare, safety, of 11,000 people in this township. You must weigh that against the financial benefit to a few hundred leaseholders, many of whom are non residents. Neither the state nor the county has the power to decide this issue. It is only your vote, yes or no, up or down. If you choose to endorse natural gas, you will lose the power to control future events in the township. You will have given it away and for nothing. Such a choice is irreversible but the risks of catastrophic consequence are not. <clears throat> However, if you choose to impose a moratorium, nothing is lost. The no drill option is always reversible. Neither gas nor opportunity will disappear with purposeful delay. The leases will not extinguish, nor will the desire of gas companies and landowners to profit by contaminating public water, public air, and public health. Windfall profits are quickly squandered. Contamination lasts for generations. Delay is prudent. Responsive. Regulations and market forces are continuing to drive improvements in the technology. The S guys continues to evolve. The price of gas held in the ground is likely to rise as supplies diminish. But once a well is completed, landowners lose all control over when and at what price and to whom their gas will be sold. Safe and responsible are two entirely different terms. Drilling like driving is never safe. Accidents will happen. But gas operators are not yet required to carry liability insurance for their wells nor drillers to be licensed. Toxic waste could be, but are not yet required to be marked. Thank you. Ron Phillips, speaker number 12. Two points. Uh, I have a survey in my hand done by a member of a gas coalition with Vesta. He contacted every state environmental agency in the United States, and he asked them two questions. Has frac fluid ever affected an aquifer in your state? And every single one of them said no. Second question he asked, has frac fluid ever affected a public drinking supply? Every single one of them said no. This was first done in July of 2010, and it's been done again this year with the same results. Not one single aquifer affected by frac fluid. This has also been verified by Lisa Jackson and the federal EPA just this past August. Same result. No known results or no known effect of frac fluid on an aquifer. Second thing to point out to you is there has been health studies done. I have one here from Texas. There is other states, but I couldn't get them in time for this meeting. People of uh, the state, Texas Department of State Health Services surveyed the people in Dish, Texas, 
small town of about 200 people in Denton County, north and northwest from the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. As a result of the mayor making the complaints about the people's health that would be deteriorated because of gas drilling, point out two conclusions. The first one of many, that there's no difference in the level of the people's health in Dish, Texas than the nation as a whole. The only residents with elevated levels of benzene in the blood were smokers. So I think if you look at a moratorium right now, without at least contacting these state agencies or listening to the New York State update on the drilling regulations, would be premature. I suggest that you do that and enforce it up or Thank you. Lucky number 13, yes. uh, <laughs> Teresa Matthews to John Smith Road. Uh, I lived in the town of Shenango since 1975. Uh, and in 2002, my husband and I bought property, uh, a small cabin in the town, uh, Silver Lake Township in Susquehanna County, where we spend part of our summer. I have lived through exactly what Bill Fisher was talking about. He was my neighbor, and I miss him and his wife because they did leave after all of that activity that happened in our little neighborhood in Susquehanna County. Uh, I continue to see the disruption to the normal pace of life uh, when I'm there in the summer. Um, I really am in favor of this moratorium for one reason, and that is for you, our leaders, to take a good look at the comprehensive plan. As it is written today, it would not support an activity such as what we have endured in Susquehanna County. I would really like to see that moratorium be put in place until you have an opportunity to finish the revision of the comprehensive plan. I want you to think about what areas of our town should remain residential and peaceful so that you can feel free to have your children go out and ride their bicycles in the street. I want you to think about what areas of the town should be commercial where we can go and shop. I want you to think about what areas of the town should remain agricultural because I really do believe that the local food movement is growing and we would really love to see more operating farms working and supplying the farmer's markets down in Otsonango Park. I would really like you to think about the quality of life issues regarding what happens when you bring heavy industrial activity and spread it piecemeal through a community every five miles having a drill site and all the traffic that goes with it. And I want you to realize that when a well is cracked, it doesn't just happen one time. It can happen multiple times every two years because once the fracking fissures start to close, they will come back and frack again. This is a long-term problem. Please think about our community and what you want it to be. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm Jerry Michael. I was born and raised in the town of Shenango. We currently live at 15 Van Curen Drive, Shenango Bridge. Uh, Speaker 12, I think, debunked the concerns about uh, water pollution, so I'm going to skip that part of my remarks and focus on what I think are a lot of environmental, economic, and natural security, natural security reasons for moving forward with natural gas development. My wife and I spent a week in the Adirondacks this summer and attended a lecture by a local naturalist at the Adirondack Museum. He was excited to report that native brook trout had begun returning to a few lakes that had been sterile from acid rain for more than 20 years. He said this is because of lower cost of local natural gas has allowed about a third of Ohio's coal-fired power plants to convert to natural gas and more and more are planning to do so from what I saw on CNN over the weekend. Natural gas is the cleanest net fossil fuel available at the present time, 
and will be a critical energy source during the interim period while we develop uh, a better renewable sources for energy. Concerning economics, the millions of dollars in ad valorem taxes that our local governments and school districts will receive from natural gas development will help them live under the new property tax caps, avoid layoffs, continue to pay public employee and teacher pensions. Conversely, if the town rejects natural gas development, the taxpayers would be burdened by the cost of defending and settling lawsuits from residents whose property rights have been unfairly denied. Natural gas produced in America also improves our balance of payments by reducing the need for reported oil and helps keep some of the cash out of the hands of Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. In summary, for our community to enjoy the benefits of this inexpensive, environment-friendly, and American energy source while refusing to allow its development and extraction locally will label us justifiably as being elitist, selfish, unpatriotic, and economically irresponsible. Lastly, if the town board thinks they need another year to study the impact of natural gas development, that implies they've been sitting on their hands for the last four and a half years, and I don't think that's the case. Thank you. Thank you. My name is David Burkhart, number 15. I live at Fort Leonard Lane, I'm representing the concerned citizens of the town of Shenango. And we strongly support the town council proposing a moratorium on fracking. The moratorium will provide time, time for the town to prepare a road use preservation law and a comprehensive plan update. It also provides a period of protection against fracking significant environmental risks, health risks, and negative quality of life impacts. In addition, there appears to be broad public support for a moratorium. Here is the latest on a public support for fracking ban based on CCTC's ongoing petition canvassing in both residential neighborhoods and on rural roads. We have contacted over 2,200 people, voters, and attempted to contact 4,000. 51% of the town's 7,800 voters. No, not everyone has been contacted yet. We are just starting on the rural roads. Since the last submission, we have 351 new signatures. The uh, total support we have is 1610 for yes, we support a ban, and 342 no's, 82% versus 18. Undeclared, 357 people. Over 70% of each uh, Republicans, Democrats, and Independents support a ban based on the data we have. The so total support on rural roads sampled to date, 222 yeses, 55 no's, that's 80, 20, in terms of percentage. We went 100% on Broxman Road and tried to contact everyone. Same results, 80% and 20%. It is true, there are roads that are gonna, we're going to have to see a lot more no's, we understand that, but we've got a long ways to go before uh, it looks like the no's will have the majority. Based on canvassing records, uh, pro projections show the majority of the town's residents support a ban, not a moratorium, ban. With that in mind, please consider that it is one vote per person, and not one vote per acre. Case for a ban, is supported by a significant, significant and growing body of evidence documented on the CCPC website. The risks are real, especially methane migration in drinking water wells, admitted by the industry, conventional drilling related water contamination, admitted by the industry, chemical spill risks, admitted by the industry. To make matters worse, there's no provisions for unleashed property owners that are harmed to be made whole again, except the courts. Why wouldn't we err on the side of caution? At least for now. Thank you. Yep. Nick Furman, number 16, Tapish Road, Town of Barker. Knock, knock. Who's there? New York residents against Coleman. Have you got a minute? What can I do for you? Do you want your water? 
poison? Do you want light shining in your bedroom at night? No? Then sign this. Because that's what's going to happen. That's how the petitions are signed. That's how they get them signed. Why are we here tonight? Why are you holding these hearings and requesting comments? For four and a half years, the state has spent hundreds of millions of dollars writing regulations and responding to over 80,000 comments. Can the town of Shenango equal that effort? Do you have that money? As, a re as recent developments have shown us, New York is not in a hurry to drill. Just this past week, yet another delay announced for a health study. Just holding this meeting and comment period is a testimony that you bought into the unfounded fear monger of people like the Sautners from Tibet. They vowed never to sign a gag order, but they did. Guess what? They bought a new home on 39 acres in Berkshire, New York. That has a gas lease. <laughs> did you fall for that? Snake oil salesman David Sloggy, who never litigated a lawsuit? A few weeks ago, I attended your road law hearing in which speaker after speaker spoke out against the law. And at the end, I heard one of you appeal to the three attorneys that were there speaking. Help us if you can. If you have any ideas, please give them to us. Well, unlike the BS that we get for free from those opposing natural gas drilling, legal advice cost. I hope you spend the money to get it. Why does Josh Fox, a proven liar, influence you when you have lost faith in your country by, by putting in a moratorium, which we don't need, you're showing that you lost faith in your country to do the job that we know can be done right. Tonight, there's a gentleman here who brought a brown jug of water. I was at that home where that brown jug of water came from this past week. The, the family that moved out because they signed the gag order and left the area. I was able to get into the house and get the water on. It's crystal clear. I drank it. I drank it two years ago in the town of Norwich. You don't need to listen to this this hype. You don't need to be here. It's time to put an end to it. Time to let science in Albany dictate to what's going on in New York. These people from Pennsylvania, they don't know what's in our, in our guide. They don't know what's in our regulations. They shouldn't be here telling you their horror stories because it's a different country as far as I'm concerned. Those people rushed to the drill. We didn't. We're going to get it right. We're going to do it right. And that's all I got to say. Thank you. Uh, Front Street, number 17. Uh, if hydraulic fracturing is so safe, then why is the industry exempt from the Safe Drinking Water Act and the Clean Water Act? They know that hydraulic fracturing is not safe, and the contaminated drinking water is inevitable. They know that carcinogens are released from the shale, brought to the surface, and dumped into the drinking water. These are the things they don't want us to know, and they will do everything in their considerable power to hide the facts and to prevent us from knowing the true dangers of hydraulic fracturing. The industry is trying to bully us into compliance with threats of lawsuits if we try to ban hydrofracking. This is a harbinger of things to come. Can you imagine when some poor individual's well becomes contaminated and he tries to hold the industry accountable? With their deep pockets, the industry will simply deny responsibility and outspend their opponents in court. Neither the single citizen nor our entire municipality will stand a chance trying to hold this multi-billion dollar industry accountable to the law. They are simply too rich and powerful, and in the end they will get their way. The only way to stop this intrusion of our community is to say no. We do not want hydrofracking, period. This means passing an outright ban. If we try to control this with myriad rules and regulations and zoning variances, their army of lobbyists will slowly but surely work behind the scenes and have them all watered down, changed, or eliminated until they no longer serve our interests, but theirs. We simply cannot risk allowing them in here, and they are not to be trusted. We, are opposing, we who are opposing hydrofracking have absolutely nothing to gain. We are not seeking riches. We are simply trying to protect our community from an unwelcome industrial invasion, which will overrun our neighborhoods with truck traffic, noise, and pollution. They, on the other hand, have everything to gain and nothing to lose. They stand to make millions while we bear the risk. They will move in here from Texas, Georgia, and from who knows where, contaminate our well, contaminate our well water, degrade our environment, ruin our roads, mar the beautiful landscape, withdraw millions of gallons of fresh, clean water from the ground and rivers. When they are done, they will leave with the profits and leave us to clean up the mess. I say no. 
I say we have rights too. They say we don't have the right to choose for ourselves. They are threatening our town with lawsuits. How dare they tell us that we have no choice and we can't decide for ourselves what we want. I am convinced that the majority of the residents of this town are opposed to hydrofracking, and it's incumbent upon you, our town board, to represent us by imposing a ban. This November, I'll be casting my vote for candidates who've come out strongly against hydrofracking. Thank you. Thank you. Joshua Fox and all, uh, probably haven't seen Truthland, which goes and debunks just about every innuendo and, and falsehood in Gasland. They won't watch it. Willful ignorance. I'm going to go back to what I did here because I'm getting irritated. Uh, <laughs> there is no reason for you doing, for having this moratorium. The state has one in place. Uh, they can deal with things like the health issues, they can deal with uh, road issues, they can deal with uh, uh, all these things that the town, heck, the town didn't, uh, admitted the other night, they didn't even have a set of scales. Uh, we don't have the facilities, the resources available that the state does. I say leave it to the state. Uh, we're going to have the traffic going through the town anyway. People that say they're afraid of accidents with the vehicles and everything. Route 12 is a state route. If there's drilling up in Barker, they're going to go on Route 12. And if you're concerned about those trucks, they're regulated by the state too. Okay. The town, let's see. Moratorium associated with the town is going to be a real problem for, uh, for the town for any future development. The people that are associated with gas are going to locate elsewhere. Uh, in the law, it says police power and land use regulation. That ought to be a red flag to everybody. Any American that, that hears people talking about police power taking your land and your resources, that's a red flag. Uh, how many people uh, losing land use uh, is enough? I say not one. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Carl Vogel. I'm number 19. I live at 9 Poplar Hill Road. The process of hydrofracking, despite its claim to maturity, remains a filthy and toxic process. No one disputes this, including the industry. The industry does argue that there is no lasting effect from what they claim is a temporary condition. But the numerous, numerous accounts from across the country, including accounts from our closest neighbors in Pennsylvania, say otherwise. The effects of heavy industrialization from fracking on our farmlands, on our beautiful rolling residential and recreational lands, as well as our most densely populated areas, including our homes, schools, and houses of worship, will be both physically and psychologically damaged. The heavy industrialization resulting from fracking will inflict serious wounds. And again, from the many, many accounts from across the country, no script nor prescription has been written to heal these wounds. What are these wounds? Water degradation most notably drinking water, but also degradation of agricultural water supplies and degradation of recreational waters as well. 
Again, a prescription to fix these wounds has yet to be written. Severe degradation of roads and bridges. A prescription to fix these wounds, other than bucket loads of money that we can't possibly ante up, has yet to be written. Severe visual and panoramic degradation. Certainly no prescription to make this right has ever been written. The health effects from fracking have yet to be studied, certainly on any long-term basis, and from the studies that have been done, there is ample evidence to show that negative health effects are present. And this includes human health as well as the health of livestock. This points to the need for dramatically more intense and in-depth study to occur, and for those studies to include a strong, over a period of time component. There is growing evidence that real estate values are beginning to take a hit, just on the possibility that fracking may occur. Permitted fracking will undoubtedly accelerate that trend. This is consistent with accounts from across the country. Population degradation is another outcome one can reasonably expect with <coughs> permitted fracking. Certainly, we, like all communities, covet diversity in our population, recognizing that it is not only economically enriching, but culturally enriching as well. Local, regional, and national evidence all bear this out. Do you think that hydrofracking is an activity that fosters such an outcome? I don't believe it does. Do you think that the young, educated, family-oriented, and ep economically mobile will choose a hydrofracking environment for their futures? I don't believe they will. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my name is my name is Michael Glennon. I'm actually from Binghamton, but I'm a member of the Labor's Local 785. And over the last two years, I have worked in Pennsylvania on pipeline and on drilling crews. And I've heard people mention about roads and in the towns of Troy, PA, Rome, PA, and New Milford, PA. They segregate roads for special uses for pipelines, so they're not just uh, ripping and roaring down any uh, rural road and. Um, there's um, more environmental inspectors on any drill crew or any phase of pipeline crew than you will see police working State Street during a Friday or Saturday night in Bennett. I've seen it firsthand. I've worked on crews where we, everything is done by whatever regulation. All construction needs an environmental footprint, but you can regulate it and you can monitor it to leave the most minimal footprint possible. So I'm against this moratorium because I believe our state, from working in PA and working in New York as a construction worker, at the toughest OSHA standards, whether it's highway work, whether it's building trade work, and I know they will when it comes to fracking. And as our DEA will do what is necessary to keep our environment safe and our water safe for future generations. And the economic boost will bring New York back to what it was when I was a child in the 80s. Thank you for your time. We're going to take a couple minute break here to stretch your legs and uh, the restrooms are down the hall on the right hand side if anybody has to go and uh, we can get back here and get on with this.